Fellas, say goodbye to Chuck Sherman the boy. I am now a man. I highly recommend you join the club. We are doing the wild thing all night. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sherm. Sherman. I could all this food. Is that all you gonna eat? General Sherman realized and understood the importance of house music. So, do you know anything about techno? No. Listen. Get it on. Yo, yo, what's up, everyone? And welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherman the Booth. I'm, of course, your host, Sherman. Today is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, and this is episode 195. Holy shit, I just realized it's episode 195. We're getting close to 200, and you know what? We just made it through January once again, people, and I'm here to keep spreading the good energy with another amazing interview. Episode 195 features the incredibly talented DJ producer, Mary Droppins. I caught up with Alyssa via Zoom and had such a blast talking with her. This interview has it all, people. Episode 195 was filled with so many great talking points, but of course we discussed her journey into house music first. Alyssa was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, and grew up listening to rock and punk music. However, it wasn't until one fateful spring break in Cancun where she witnessed Steve Aoki deliver energy through music like she's never experienced. She was hooked. Eventually, she moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in dance music, while she also still hustled a job at Native Instruments, though. And of course, she fell in love with the house music scene. Now, all these years later, she's making big waves and loving absolutely every minute of it. Now, of course, one of the main reasons I wanted to have Mary on the show was to talk about her music, the... And although her first release was in 2021, she's delivered hit after hit, staying consistent with quality while also bending the rules of sound. With tracks like Crypto Queen with Baby J and Cyber Rodeo, and Acid Mother, both via Pop Gang Records, shout out to that crew. And of course, her incredible remix of LPGOB's Take My Hand. That song is nuts. There's no denying that there's definitely something different about Mary and her music. And you know what? I love it. Mary and I had an instant connection, and we came to realize it's because we both have been so embraced by the dance music community. Throughout this interview, Mary and I talked about the different collectives, labels, and groups in the scene that have taken us all in based on our love of music. Mary is closely affiliated with Femme House, Desert Hearts, Justin J's Fantastic Voyage, and Dirty Bird Records, all of which have made massive impacts on the scene. This is what it's all about, people, spreading love through music and sharing those moments together. Mary and I shared some of our favorite stories from day one as a fan all the way through now. Such a fun conversation. I was already a fan of Mary Droppins, but after this interview, I'm officially a super fan. Her energy is amazing and she's insanely talented. Not to mention, she's also hilarious. I absolutely love this interview and I know you guys will too. So without further ado, let's get into it right now so you can hear her story for yourselves. This is episode 195 with Mary Droppins. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to Sherm in the Booth. I am here with Alyssa, Alyssa, aka Mary Droppins. Where are you right now? Like theoretically, with the background, where do you picture yourself? I am, you know, in the Wizard of Oz right now. Yeah. Actually, I uh, just saw some of the monkeys, but you know, birds are just flying. Things are calming down right now. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. It's like post-apocalyptic war. I get a little bit of Avatar vibes there too. Yeah, yeah, Avatar for sure. <laughs> Dude, that I love that movie. I was just talking about it recently. I could watch that shit all the time. It's entertaining. I need as to fuck. watch it again. For it's been sure. a while. So good. It's been a while. Aren't they supposed to make Avatar too? I think so. Yeah, it's it's been a minute since I've seen it. It was one of my favorites too. So I'm gonna watch that tonight. <laughs> 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 Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I will too. We'll FaceTime and we'll watch it together. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I won't but, be in this world for that. I'll, I'll be at the couch for that one. On the couch in your <laughs> aloe jumpsuit, right? In the aloe jumpsuit, yep. Shout out to aloe. We're looking for sponsorships and uh, I'm wearing a Nike sweatsuit right now. Um, we want to just say real quick, once again, before we went live, we're empowering everyone this year to be their best comfortable self. That's right. Simple message, people. Be yourself and be comfortable while you're doing it. Yeah. Be your best comfortable self. That's a pretty good tagline. I think so. <laughs> That's my tagline for my shows. <laughs> yeah. Be your best comfortable. Hey, you know what? 
if you told people like to come in pajamas or come in like there's no dress code, I bet you could get a lot of people that don't usually come out like, well, if I can, you know, wear my pajamas and can I bring a pillow? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, I've always wanted to have like a bed available near the dance floor. Like, mm-hmm. And it, I love laying, lay down dancing. You know, you can just like lay, be comfortable, take your feet around. <laughs> <laughs> lay down dancing. That's a new one, too. Yeah. <laughs> We're off to a hot start here. This is amazing so far. (laughs) (laughs) Alyssa, I got to tell you, like I said, um, I had so much fun researching your brand, you as a person, coming up with questions, listening to all your music. I'm really excited about this because you've had such a massive year and I feel like you're coming on right before the bubble's about to seriously pop for you. So congrats on a big 2021. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to all my music. Yeah, I love it. I really do. Like for those that didn't know, and maybe those that have been asking me, I have been dropping your Jimmy world sweetness. What was it called? It's not a remix or an edit. What did you call it? The drop and see world at rework. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. People right there. That's the type of person she is. I that's love fire. that so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's sick. It does so well. And I think it just speaks numbers about, your unique sound and and who you are as a person. So keep rocking on for real. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I always like to kick these interviews off with a question and we've covered a lot of topics so far. So I don't think I have anything left after this. Just kidding. (laughs) But this has been great so far. You had a huge 2021. We're already kicking it off 2022. I can't believe it's already February or about to be by the time this comes out. I know. What's your biggest goal this year and how are you going to achieve it? I would say my biggest goal this year is to play a major festival. Okay. I'd love to do that. And nice. uh, I'm hoping that just all the the music that I'm putting out, I have a bunch of releases lined up, can mm-hmm. really set me into that direction and get on one of the big stages. Hell yeah. So. You deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. You just started releasing music in... 2021 right mm-hmm. april april 2021 was the first release wow yeah. geez off to a hot start dude you released how one two three four five like seven tracks yeah i i got hooked i mean i had been producing for about two years prior to releasing mm-hmm. and really i the courage just came through to me to start releasing when i was streaming on twitch yeah i started sharing my music on there and getting the good feedback and i was like just put it out. I don't, what am I waiting for? You know, it's not going to yeah. be the right moment or the right label. Just start putting stuff out. Absolutely. I know the feeling. It's like you produce, you show it to your friends and it's a little nerve wracking because now the world is going to hear what you've been creating. But the fact is once you put it out, then you move on to the next one, you get feedback, you gain that confidence and you learn from it and you grow. So I know a lot of producers out there resonate with that. So good for you for taking that jump. You got to do it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you, but you were a DJ before a producer then, cause you've been in this game since 2015, right? Yeah. So I started out DJing and, uh, I didn't even think I, I, I didn't even have plans to produce. I thought I was going to really work towards just doing a live set. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then I decided to go to school for production and that's really when I was just like, wait, I can make my own music. It's not that hard. Like it is hard, but yeah, it's do it's possible. So yeah. You don't have to be Hans Zimmer, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be, I mean, that's kind of the beautiful part of it these days. I mean, I've interviewed producers and DJs that started in the seventies and eighties and I've interviewed DJs and producers that started two years ago, like yourself releasing music. And the common thing is that regardless of how you made it or who, how you put it out or who likes it or who doesn't like it, you got to do it for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, Definitely. Actually, that's one of my track titles for the EP that's coming out in March. It's called do it for yourself. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> Abraca fucking Dabra right now. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> wow do it for yourself people just motto after tagline after mantra today 
We're a walking marketing crew right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're a, we're a laying marketing crew. Remember yeah. we're laying down while we do everything now. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you mentioned before we went uh, on air, you're from Omaha, Nebraska. Now you're in Los Angeles. What was it like growing up in Omaha? I mean, is there much of a dance music scene there, at least when you were growing up? No, uh, when I was growing up, I was going to see a lot of emo bands and, uh, you know, just like the big concerts that would come through Mm -hmm. in every city. So I really didn't discover my love for electronic until about um, like nine years ago. So that was like in my early 20s. And so. Yeah, it was it was not really prevalent there. I actually went to um, Cancun and I saw Steve Aoki DJ for the first time. That was like my first DJ. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it's probably sick, though. I mean, honestly, how cool is that? Yeah, it was the cake throwing days. I was like, yep. OK, what? These are like <laughs> DJ, DJs. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> was it spring break? Um, it, I think it was around spring break time or, uh, it probably was around winter break. Cause that's usually like being in from Nebraska. Every time it was Christmas and winter break, we'd try to go find a beach. Yeah. It was winter. <laughs> I mean, Dude, you, you're probably feeling that right it's, now. Uh, it's single digits here in Chicago. Love it this time of year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> you can't, like, love it. Your car. You're just like, come on. Break the ice, break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the many reasons I don't have a car here, but I've heard so many people complain about it. Like, yeah, you know what it's like. It's it's just as bad in Nebraska. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Gosh, that's awesome, though. I, I actually am going to Florida to or today's Tuesday. Yeah, Thursday. So I'm getting the hell out of here for a little while. Oh, nice. I love Florida. Yeah, me too. I'm going to Fort Lauderdale, the new Miami, or at least for old people, they're calling it. Yeah, I'm down for that to be called the new Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I just went to Miami last summer for the first time. And God damn, that is not a real place. <laughs> I loved it. I had a great time, but it's like a smorgasbord of so many different cultures and, and nightlife experiences and food and people. And I, I was awesome. But like, it's almost like a Vegas to me. And I think I'm going for Miami Music Week and I'm already hung over thinking about it, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm going to power through. Miami Music Week is my favorite time to be there for sure. Yeah, I need it. I need to experience that in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing like it. Okay, well then we'll link up because I'll be there 100%. Yeah, same. I will be there too. Okay, cool. Well, wow, we just made plans together. Wow, are we? did we just become best friends? Oh, yeah. I mean, we became friends over uh, Jimmy track anyways. <laughs> yes, we definitely did. We definitely did. Amazing. Uh, OK, rewind. Nebraska, Omaha. You're like getting into electronic music. You discover it. Did you like because I had a similar experience. I saw a Vici my freshman year of college, like in 2011, like when he released Levels. Barely had any friends that liked electronic music, though. Like, was it kind of just you against the world? loving electronic music or did you have any friends or anybody that you were enjoying the scene with? Uh, so one of my roommates, she had studied abroad in Australia and she came back and she was showing me some electronic music and I was like, yeah. what? So we kind of connected over that. And, um, and then my boyfriend at the time liked it too, cause he was from out here in California. Mm-hmm. So he knew a lot about electronic music so it was it was a very small group it definitely wasn't i didn't have a large group in nebraska yeah my love for electronic and that's ultimately why i ended up moving out here on the west coast because uh i just i loved i went to coachella and i was just like wow like this is the culture here like Mm -hmm. this this could be a lifestyle (laughs) i I made it a lifestyle then (laughs) oh that's awesome so you took a chance then you moved to Los Angeles and in, in pursuit of music. Mm-hmm. Wow. That, did you like get a day job to hustle or like what exactly? Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. For yeah sure. I, I had a nine to five. I was in actually in marketing and uh, advertising for the past 10 years. So wow. I only quit my full time job like two years ago. So I've only been full time DJing for two years. Wow. Uh, and total of like almost seven years. So most of my DJ career on the local level was when I had a job. So 
I'd have like a Wednesday night gig and mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say no to any gigs because I was just yeah. wanting to play as much as I can. For sure. And I'd have a meeting the next morning at 7 a.m. because I was actually working at Native Instruments and oh, cool. all of our, uh, the rest of our staff was in Germany. So 7 a.m. was the time that everyone <laughs> was able to meet. So yeah, there's no pushing in, meeting like, back. Okay. <laughs> Get myself together here. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Mad respect, Alyssa. I've been hustling at a day job, too, and it starts at 7 a.m., so I know exactly what it's like. You, yeah. you got to pursue them. I mean, not pursue them, but, like, you got to do the day job because it gives you the ability to finance yourself musically and build your brand, but you can't hold back on pursuing gigs because it's how you get your name out there, and it takes a certain type of person to do both. Yeah, absolutely. It does, and... So that's I was really excited when I did start working for Native Instruments because they understood me with, you know, being a DJ and they were mm -hmm. a little bit more lenient with sometimes if I had to come in a little later and stuff like that, because they uh, I mean, the whole company's built on DJ gear and software. So, yeah, it was it was a good it was a good last job in the office for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. I bet you still have a lot of friends that still work there or maybe even are still in your circle. Yeah. They, and they're, they're some of my biggest supporters that come to all my shows and I make music with a lot of them. And, uh, yeah. it's, and actually my first release was with one of my coworkers. Uh, I released it, my track birdies on her label. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Deck record, right? Deck record. Yeah. Lida. Wow. Shout and out Lida. Coworkers. <laughs> That's not, come on. You don't, you don't hear that all the time. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, she was in the sales department. I was in the marketing. So we would get like lunch and tacos and beer during the day. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, it was funny. Full circle. We started uh, my first release was on her label. Wow. That's awesome. So cool. That's what it's all about, though. You, you never know when you're going to obviously Native Instruments is an exception, but you never know when you're going to cross paths with someone that. It's just meant to be. I mean, think about it. You came from Omaha, Nebraska to move to California to be a DJ. You got a job at Native Instruments. You started producing, DJing. Everything's come together for you. This is cool. Yeah, it was It was really um, uh, like unplanned and really magical how, the way that it worked out. It just, it really, that's why I ended up quitting my job and taking the leap because I just felt like, you know, I can trust myself in this and everything is really, um, you know, as I open myself up to this side, everything's really just flown in nicely. So I was like, this is meant to be. Wow. Well, for what it's worth, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. Thank you. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. So you released this track, Birdies, in April 2021, but mm -hmm. there's obviously a long period of time before then. Do you remember when you thought to yourself, okay, I know I want to DJ, but if I want to produce, it's going to take you to the next level? Was there a certain like day, time, moment that influenced you to make that move? Uh, it was actually while I was working at Native Instruments because I was working a lot with educators. So I got really close with all the teachers at IO Academy and Hollywood and Musicians wow. Institute and um, a bunch of other like our icon and mm -hmm. um uh, Max Senate and everything that was all around here in LA. And I was, uh, helping, you know, get them discounts for students. And I just started realizing like, this is gonna, This is probably going to be my next step. And just yeah. by having that position and in, in my marketing job and talking to these teachers, I was like, I, why don't I go to school? Like I, and they have classes like after work, like I could just yeah. go down the street and start going. So I ended up going with IO Academy mm -hmm. and, um, it, yeah, it was it was mostly because of the experience with them on the work side that I was like, OK, this makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Damn. OK. But the music you've released is not this is not cut and dry music, Mary. Like this is like very unique. Like, well, I mean, we're going to go through your music, but I got to tell you before we get into it, like your creativity and your just like limitless I don't know how to say it. You're like limitless limitations. Like your sound design is so cool. Like I almost just feel like you got in the studio and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen today, but we're going to have fun. And every song like to me has a unique energy to it. And it's just really exciting. Like as a music lover, that's why I do this. That's why I'm a DJ, why I love podcasting. I just love listening to music. And 
I got excited listening to all your songs. So I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Yeah. In my studio that I had in LA, uh, I had this big sign up above my computer that said, find, uh, fuck around and find out. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <Let's go>. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like my method, just like, and yeah. I, I don't force myself to produce either. Mm-hmm. If I'm, if I'm feeling it and I'm inspired, I get in there. And if not, otherwise it's going to become daunting. Cause you know, I'm a DJ first. So yeah. I like fast, like gratification. Mm-hmm. And so I, if I'm not feeling it, I won't go do it. So that's kind yeah. of like where I'm at. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice. I was talking to um, somebody recently who says they've made every single one of their songs. And it, he was a singer in his like bedroom with his friend, right? Like putting like a blanket over his head, like, because he's just like hanging out in a comfortable space. And when somebody's like, all right, come to my studio with a thousand different knobs and, you know, a separate recording area, he's like, I can't focus. I feel like the pressure's on and I'm not creative. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel that. And and yeah, like collaborating was, was a really big part of my journey and mm-hmm. working with specifically actually uh, my friend that I worked with at Native Instruments. He goes by Schrodes. He and I actually helped start up sounds.com which was a like competition to splice and yeah uh, while we were both at native instruments and he was on like the engineer side and i was doing the social media and marketing for it cool. and we just like connected because he was he came out to one of my D, my shows and he like he's like i haven't produced or been in music for like 10 years but you just lit my fucking fire let's go and i was like wow. okay let's go and so then we just he taught me like so many tricks he taught me how to make breaks and mm-hmm. um i would say that that was probably like the biggest um like learning that i had in music i i learned how to do sound design at io academy but mm-hmm. um yeah, on the breaks and the the rave shit. That was <laughs> that was him. Yeah, dude. Future Moon is a sick track. Yeah, it was shrill. <laughs> Come on, I know you're ready for this sick track. This one's called Future Moon by Mary Droppins and Shrows. Let's get it. A vast radiant beach and a cool jeweled moon. Couples naked race down by its quiet side. And we laugh like socks the mad children. downloaded yeah like oh i'll tell you humbly when i go through everybody's discography like 99 percent of the time i'm like this is a great track but there's one the one percent that i'm like i gotta go to beatport and get this shit right now like the, people don't know about this track you know like that's what i'm thinking i'm like holy shit and like that track it's like new disco meets old school house like you really captured a feeling like I'm telling you, I I obviously wasn't a lot. I wasn't really around during this time from what I've heard. This was like late 80s Chicago, early 90s, like rave, like, but also like soulful. Mm -hmm. Did I capture it there? Yeah, like it, it, it has everything that makes me want to feel good about disco music. And it's funny because so I had sampled my because I'm one of my biggest inspirations and one of my favorite artist of all time is Jim Morrison from The Doors. Yeah, and awesome. I had sampled his track, The Ghost Song, for that. And uh, I kind of rearranged some of his lyrics to kind of speak oh. to today. And the guitar riff that's like, meow, in the yeah. track, that's from the original. 
So it's like, it was crazy. It was like meant to be made into a disco house track. Like, dude, whoa, <laughs> my mind is blown. I was listening to it. And I was like, I don't know what this is from, but like, I'm digging it. That's, yeah, right. Wow. That's so creative. Holy shit. No one knows this track. And it was my favorite one that he wrote. It's it just really spoke to me. And I love the way that he was like his lyrics are written and the way that his voice sounds. So mm -hmm. I've always been wanting to really um, do do a track with his on there. And it's funny because someone recently told me when I when they asked who my inspiration was. And I told him him, they're like, it's funny because he used to say in the future, it'll be electronic, like back in the day, like That's way true. back when he was around. And I'm just like, whoa, like it's crazy. <laughs> He's in an electronic song now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You manifested that shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I I forgot that he said that. That's a very famous quote. He he was sort of above his time or but i mean i guess for his time i should say but mm -hmm. i love jim morrison i haven't thought about i haven't listened to the doors in too long yeah it's my favorite that's a deep <laughs> cut too nice work yeah. <laughs> that's like a deep cut i get deep okay <laughs> all right <laughs> shout out to schrodes shout out to schrodes great track future moon yeah. um Another collaboration that I loved uh, was Glow BB. Did I say that right? Glow BB. Yeah, Glow BB. Glow BB. <laughs> I laughed out loud when I saw that. I was like, Glow BB. Oh, I'm okay. It's I'm going like, to listen for sure. Does the track make you just feel like glowing? Yes. Like, it's so cute. It's the cutest banger is what we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> the cutest banger. Who is Danny Golliger? Oh, yes. Danny Golliger. He's, he's another one of my favorite people to collaborate with. Uh, we actually just connected through our love for like electro left field and like mm -hmm. breaks and stuff as well. And yeah, um, he's a part of the Fantastic Voyage crew. Okay. With Justin J. And um, yeah, we just I don't know. We just like it wasn't even planned. It was just like I hit him up one time. I was like, we should work on a track. And he's like super down and timing aligned. And we've made like four since then. And so. The one that we haven't put out yet, you're going to freak. It's so fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we went <laughs> modular with it. So it was fun to work with him because he showed me a lot on how to uh, use modular stuff. So I was like twisting things, plugging things in. And I was like, what the fuck? And we were just <laughs> going wild. It was so fun. <laughs> That's the best. Like, because <clears throat> we kind of grew up like in, in the laptop world where it's like you do everything from your laptop. And then once you can actually physically twist the knobs and literally connect the cords together, it's like a whole new world. Yeah. It's wow. super powerful. I feel like a wizard when I'm on it. So you are. I mean, this <laughs> this track is wild. Like it's got break feet, breakbeat vibes, but then it builds up into a progressive melodic masterpiece. Like it grows like the entire time. Like it just you just keep layering it and layering it, but in a really, really well thought out way. And like it was like a groovy track that I could dance to, but I also felt myself like just genuinely entertained by it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love to end some of my sets with it because it's just, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's just so uplifting. Yes. It really is. That is a great, tr great track to end sets with. Thank you. <laughs> that would be tough to follow up. I don't know what I would play if I played after you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's normally like when I'm the last one playing. Okay. <laughs> I want to leave everyone feeling really good. Like they got the magic yes. on them and then just, they're just, yeah, they can sleep well tonight. Yeah. And you know, I, I was listening to a lot of the mixes and sets that you've done. And I mean, you are a rad DJ dude for real, like, like a, a true taste maker. And, and I watched a quick clip and we'll talk about it later. Your um, Femme House intro to DJing. You think about DJing a lot differently and I could kind of hear that in your sets, like in your track selection. You are really trying to bring emotion out of people. Yeah. I am. Thank you for noticing that. I, um, yeah, I, I'm very unconventional the way I approach it. And mm -hmm. uh, every, I'm super embedded into my tracks. Like when I find one that is, I just, I'll listen to it for like a whole month straight, like yeah. just that one. Like, and, <laughs> and, and then when I find it later on, like two years later, I like, run it back I'm like oh my gosh and I'm like it's just so emotional and you probably see it through the way that I move and stuff when I'm listening to music because yeah 
yeah, I'm I'm super emotional uh, journey style DJ. I like to create a story from it. So yeah, no, it's so cool. I listened to this interview recently with Tiga, who was talking to Mark Ronson, um, and they were talking about being a DJ before a producer and how like they just kind of wanted to get in the music industry and have that feeling of contact with the music. And when I listened to one of your sets, I could feel like you have this physical connection with an audio waveform. If that makes sense. Like, I mean, you got a trippy ass background, so I'm going to get trippy right now. Like, I just, I don't know what it was, you know, like as, as a DJ myself that loves playing different types of sets and has DJed my fair share. Like I just felt a, a really, really good energy from like just clips I've seen from you. You're just into it. And like, that's fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm doing what I love and I couldn't never, I never imagined this. I thought I was going to be a fashion designer or something. And really? Yeah. So finding this, it was like, I, it blows my mind every day, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, I'm just so grateful to have found this and be able to make this my career and my lifestyle. Good for you. That's so inspiring. I, I always like to mention too, that like, I don't really even, I, I love this podcast and the success of it is, is really neither here nor there to me. I'm just happy that I found my passion of talking to people about what they love, you know, and like, yeah. that's, that's fulfilling for me. And it sounds like you get that same experience from music too. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's so fun to connect with people. I mean, I feel like I've made some of my best friends ever through this. And mm -hmm. um, I always kind of felt like in the middle when I wasn't growing up, like I wasn't with the popular kids, but I wasn't with like the emo, like yeah. goth kids. I was like always floating <laughs> in the middle. So it's just, like, I feel like I found it. <laughs> you were just the techno rave breakbeat producer just at a yeah. young, young age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Amazing. Okay, cool. Next up, uh, definitely one of your coolest tracks and certainly a reputable remix from the one and only LPGOB, Take My Hand. Um, this original is so incredible. And what you did with it is, is really next level, in my opinion. Like, it, you're listening to it, and then I'm like, whoa! Like, I, li I was listening, I'm like, okay, yeah, what's, what's going to happen here? And then I was like, listen, here's the deal. You're going to have to listen to this track with us real quick, because after you listen, you're going to hear my description and be like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's go. LPGOB, Take My Hand in the Mary Choppins remix. And then it keep going. I was like, what? It made you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> like the for sure. Face going. <laughs> Dude, and I I had I uh what was it? I had my sub pack on because I oh. sometimes like if if I if I wherever I am, if I can listen to music with my sub pack, especially your type of music, and that shit was like <laughs> I was like, wow, holy fuck me, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe this track but like i want to hear about it because you know lp's had a, a really really big breakout year and it's just 
you know, kudos to you for having an official remix. And I mean, how exciting is that? Oh my gosh. I, I did it, the way that it happened. It's still shocking to me because she actually hit me up to interview me for her Sirius XM uh, show on the Diplo <laughs> one for nice. Fem House. Yeah. And her and I actually go back. So I'll explain that. But um, she hit me up about it and I was just like, I love your take my hand track so much. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. It's so good. Like, and um, because it it actually it doesn't say it says like hey lord take my hand and i i just feel like i love her music it's just very spiritual for me in a way and so i just really connected to that track and i was just like gosh it'd be so cool to like remix it she goes do you want to remix it i'll send you the stems right now holy (laughs) shit i'm saying right now i'm like yeah all right i was just like throwing it out expecting to know like i didn't even and I didn't even plan to throw that out. It just like popped out of my mouth. And I was like, Whoa. Oh, shit. And then she just was like, I'm sent and she sent it to me right after that. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> gee, what do I do with these? It's a lot of, so I wanted a lot to of do emotion. Something wild with it, like totally off the cuff. Um, and she did say that a few, she had a few other artists remixing it, like Walker and Royce. And <laughs> so I figured, you know, they're going to come at this from like a tech house perspective. For sure. And so what can I do that's different but still works with those vocals? And this like it's like kind of UK. It's it, it's I don't even know. Like I was yeah, I was just yeah, it was like a little bit of garage vibes, but um just like lo- a lot of low end and just a, a nice a nice bass line and um yeah, it it was super fun to write and she was stoked right when i sent it to her she was like this is fucking fire let's go yeah <laughs> so, no seriously it was, it was great but um wow so actually how i originally met her was when i was working at native instruments and uh one of my one of the teachers from max senate that i had worked with on a daily getting him the discount codes for students he told me about her he's like hey i collaborate with this girl you should really know her and it was before she really took off. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to meet her. And I'm I'm trying to build some more female artists here in the office, like with the A&R guy. And mm-hmm. so they connected us. And um, it was instantaneous when I was on the phone with her. I was like, I feel really connected to this girl. Like we, I, I don't know, like, did we go to grade school together or something? <laughs> but <laughs> it's Wow. Like, what the heck and um and we just we just started bouncing off each other you know i I had an opportunity to book artists for nam so i hit her up first and i got her a bunch of free gear and then she hit me up to do some uh girls rock camp where we could I, she taught production and i taught djing to like 12 year old girls at this camp oh, so and cool. we drove out together and just really got to know each other and then she'd book me for the w hotel which was like so cool and my parents loved that because that you know when i first started dj they're like where, yeah. where are you playing and like right scary nightclubs and yeah. like, a lot of drugs and stuff and i'm like no it's not like that i'm playing at the w hotel oh like, yeah good. mom and dad <laughs> so um yeah and then we just we just stayed close like she's been an angel on this journey for me i i definitely owe wow. her a lot for, That's the, awesome. for what she's done for me that, that is a special story. And it just goes to show, like you said, the people that you meet in the music industry, no matter how big or small, like you just have that common connection of like, hey, we're in this together. You want to want to connect? You want to collaborate? You want to be friends? Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Wow. I got yeah. chills right now for real. And I told you I was sweating earlier. I'm cold now. <laughs> I'm giving you, I'm giving you all the emotions right now. Jesus you can be crying yeah, at the end you, of this. You know what? I you got to start asking me questions. I'm I I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so what cool. What keeps you up at night? <laughs> hmm, nothing. I'm always tired, so I sleep great. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I I was I sleep really great. I'm a professional sleeper. <laughs> me too. I can fall asleep in 30 seconds. My fiance hates it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a skill these days, especially being in the music industry, like props. Yeah. Quick, quick 20 minute nap. Don't don't restart that REM cycle. I'm back up, ready to go. <laughs> but I feel like I slept for 10 days sometimes when I sleep for 10 minutes. Very strange feeling. Oh, you go you go deep. I go really deep, dude. I go deep. I go deep. I go deep. <laughs> <laughs> I get deep. I get deeper. Hell, dude, I interviewed Roland Clark, the guy who literally 
sang those lyrics. Yeah. And he's such like a humble guy. And I'm like, I'm like trying not to freak out. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to like. Come on, man. You saying I get deep, man. Like, what the fuck, man? That's, that's crazy. He's like, yeah, yeah. You know, people don't appreciate it like they should. I'm like, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're like, I have everything. It's everything to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that that's a great example, too. Like, um, I think, you know, Honey Love, right? Because we're about to talk about pop gang records. Yes, I, I do know Honey Love. She's a good friend of mine. Yeah, Taylor uh is is in one way or another being mentored by roland clark and he's helping her learn to produce and incorporate her vocals and i found that so cool and inspiring that like these legends these ogs are like yeah. all about helping that next generation people like us and and honey love and i just i love that so much and i i think you find that in dance music a lot but mm -hmm. particularly in house music yeah that that's so dope i'm happy to hear that it's just like that's what we're supposed to be doing, you know, like mm -hmm. I, that's why I, when I teach my fem house courses, I, I want to just even though I'm not an OG right now, whatever I have to share, I'm going to share it with those that want to get started. And yeah, I think that's how we keep the scene healthy, you know, mm -hmm. it's like passing the torch, sharing the knowledge, just being there for people. And so I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. I think when one person wins, we can all win together. We share that success because we're all united by the common love of music, like we said. Yeah. It's simple. Exactly. It's simple. Okay, so speaking of pop gang records, you got two sick fucking tracks, Acid Mother and Crypto Queen. Dude, real quick about pop gang, because when I interviewed Taylor, I was like, who is pop gang records? Because, like, you're dropping shit with them, but, like, they're more than a label. They're, like, releasing merch. Like, they've just got a great brand. What's your relationship with them? Because you released two tracks with them now. Yes, uh, we are besties. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love the pop gang guys. Uh, they were my first like, you know, because my first label was one of my friends from Deck Record. And mm -hmm. then they were my first like local label that we didn't have any like rapport prior to that give me a shot and like yeah. want to put my music out. So I have yeah. like a very special place in my heart with them. And wow. um, like the Crypto Queen track is... So it's, it's, it's a dance floor killer. Well, I know this one's a dance floor killer, but let's see what you guys think. This one's called Crypto Queen by Mary Droppins with Cyber Rodeo and Baby J by a pop game records. <laughs> time we all go off and <laughs> um they the the cyber rodeo aspect of it is their party so mm -hmm. i've been playing uh, i played their party in december and um they actually helped me uh source my merch so we just have like an ongoing relationship and yeah. i'm just super grateful to connect with those guys yeah they seem super collaborative taylor said mm -hmm. a lot of the same things like that is so awesome. You got to be more than a label these days and not just because you got to create different revenue streams, but like you do, you kind of have to. And yep. it's obvious that, especially with these two releases and I, I've listened to all their releases, dude, it's not that they don't care what they release. They just want it to be good music. And that's so clear and evident to me. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what I love. I mean, and me as an artist, I don't want to be boxed in. Yeah. So to work with other friends that are on the same path and like, you know, they had released a house track and then they 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 meet Acid Mother and they're like down. And I'm like, let's <laughs> fucking go. Like, yeah. <laughs> Acid Electro Detroit in your face. Let's go. Well, you heard her. Let's go. This one's called Acid Mother by Mary Droppins via Pop Game Records. Ooh.
here's what I wrote down and I had to write it down. Okay. Cause <laughs> I felt a million different vibes here. It's like old school Detroit meets Ukrainian left field techno meets UK acid. And Aww. like, then they had a baby and that baby grew up and then decided to make its own music. And maybe they, I don't know where that baby grew up, but it's a really cool baby and it's leading a great career. And then it decided to make acid mother and it's fucking wild, dude. A track is so sick. Yes, I, I, uh, it, it was, it's kind of like my theme song. <laughs> it was, it was, as it was in my, mother? <laughs> it's my theme song because it's like, uh, well, the lyrics in there, Hail Mary Full of Bass, uh-huh. that was created basically on my Twitch account. I had all, all the, all the followers on there. We were always like rolling, making funny jokes. Like yeah. they used to call, and then, I would like just do crazy like tricks and moves on the decks and they would be like, Hail Mary full of bass. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Thanks and praise. Shout out to the fans. Yeah. So I, when I added that line in there, I added it because I realized I was like, Whoa, there's like three acid lines going in and out of each other right now. That's a lot of acid. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, and then Hail Mary, you know, the mother of Jesus. I was yeah. like, this works great. I'm mother. <laughs> Hail Mary full of bass. <laughs> so I was like, this is my theme song. <laughs> yes. Damn. This is a dance floor killer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They both are. Crypto Queen it's, has got to be too, like you said. Oh, yeah. And the Acid Mother, I think um, I did I did make it at 137. So I think it's... um. It, it's a little bit it's a lot for some people that are just starting <laughs> out and that are, are in the 124 range but it works great at 133 so don't be afraid don't hey, be afraid to do drop it drop that BP, <laughs> bpm down four you guys are gonna be okay but i had to come in with a blast you know <laughs> yeah dude hell yeah that's so cool great track wow yeah Okay, but tell me more about Crypto Queen because you were going into it. And I think like everything about this track is dope. Like the pace of the kick and the groove, excellent. The variety of percussion, phenomenal. And the sampling of Ferris Bueller. Am I hearing that correctly in here? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, dude. You and the samples, man. Wow. <laughs> I know. I'm, 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 I love to sample stuff. It just, it was so funny. I made that track with Baby J from Pop Gang and mm-hmm. we, pretty much our, our uh, plan of attack was like, let's make an acid track. You yeah. Know, like let's make, cause I just dropped acid mother with them and he was right. like, let's make an acid track together. I was like, okay. Yeah. And we were just kind of building around that. And then I really wanted there to be like a, um, like a halftime moment in the track where we, it kind of sounds like a little bit of trap. It, you might have like kind of got that vibe, dude. I, have you seen Blade before? Because I felt like I was in the intro scene of Blade for yeah. a moment, like where they're in the club with the vampires. I was like, "Whoa, what? What is going on in this track?" But it was so yeah. cinematic. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, we were going in that direction, and then we were just kind of like we were having fun, and we went outside to take a little break from the studio, and I was like still hearing it in my head. And all of a sudden I just turned around I'm like, bow, bow. And he's like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> and then I was like, ooh, bow, bow. And I was yeah. like, chica, chica. And then we were just like, yes, yes, yes. Let's go, let's go. And I'm like, find the sample, find the sample. And then it just, it was, dude. just sent it. <laughs> Proof in the pudding that you got to have fun with what you're doing once again. <laughs> yeah. We're always having fun in the studio. Like I, that's definitely another goal of mine. I want to get out there and collaborate with more people because it is a fucking blast. Good for you. It's awesome. That's quite the, quite the discography we have here already. Yeah. We mentioned the Jimmy world. Is there anything you can tell us about while we're on the top of music that you're allowed to really, or allowed to say? Uh, yeah. So actually February, since this will be most likely out in this month, yes. um, the track that is coming out this month is called hot pants and it's going to be released on insomniac's discovery label. And it's, it's, it's one of my babies for Dude, sure. Like congrats. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, like uh, breaks techno acid it's and then the vocals on it are uh 
my friend Roa, I had her come in and record the vocals for it. And it's just so beautiful and like hypnotic. It's, it's sick. Wow. Sounds I'll like send it to you after this. So yeah. I was just going to request that, please. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it sounds like it's like a perfect fusion of all of your previous releases. Like, yeah. Would you say it's definitely my harder one? Yeah, for sure. for sure. It's like, I mean, it, it's hard to say like, this is my direction or my sound, but like, I mean, just judging by your energy with that description, sounds like you're so excited about this. This is the direction you love. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I mean, I'm I'm sweet, but I love to play some hard music for sure. Yeah, dude, you got you wearing. I saw a video you're wearing like uh, I don't even know what it is. It's like a a pink like flapper of some sort. I don't know. I'm terrible. Yeah, with it, I was like, it almost. Well, I wore that because it, I had an Austin Powers edit. And it was inspired me from Austin Powers. Sometimes I, was, I dress like yes. my tracks. <laughs> Smart. And, um, yeah. So that was where that came from. But the video you're talking about, it's like it was some heavy garage. Yeah. Dude, I was like, <laughs> people were probably so confused, but like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, I I, uh, I actually had built up like a really cool set that was for Desert Hearts. Um, mm -hmm. It was like. I brought it in. It was very melodic to begin with. Did some deep house. Um, Pat and then started doing some of the breaks. And then all of a sudden, like I had it like a groove is in the heart uh, edit that I mm -hmm. was playing. And then all of a sudden, I just like cut it and hit him with the UK gar garage, like the build up on it. And I was just like, oh, yeah. everyone was just like, <laughs> <laughs> even no words. <laughs> no. Wow. I'm sweating again. So we're good. We're back to equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, that track is fire. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. And and speaking of Desert Hearts, I was just about to ask you. Um you had such a big year in, in regards to shows and opportunities. Like you started off this year by doing a lot of streams with Desert Hearts. You're literally on the Abracadabra set right now. You did Fem House, Justin Martin's Good TV, and that just transition right into live shows you killed it splash house dirty bird camp out vegas gigs desert heart events stuff all over southern california i mean once again let's go mary yeah sick dude but i want to talk about the desert hearts people because uh desert hearts community i should say because mm -hmm. they come up so often with people's either first experience with that type of music and inspiring them to produce or dj or just talking about one of the best parties they've ever been to. And you got to play a lot of their events. Can you tell yeah. me about your relationship with them and sort of the community that you're now involved in? Yeah, uh, this this is very, like, this is very close to my heart. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been going to Desert Hearts festivals for the past, I mean, my, before the pandemic, past five years. Uh, it was wow. the first festival that I went to by myself. And it was just like, I went there and I was like, this is, that was like really what gave me the courage of like, this, I, this is where I, this is my goal. My goal yeah. is to be here. Like I love, you know, Coachella is like long-term stuff, but this is my main goal is to be a part of Desert Hearts. Mm -hmm. And it's just really cool to like the guys like bringing me in and um, having me be a part of it. Like but had me play at church in Denver, which was sick. And then yeah. the New Year's Day party. And I, over the pandemic, um, when they were on Twitch, they hit me up to take over a night and I got to curate the lineup. And I was like, I'm bringing all of my girls on yeah. this. Like they're like other people had curated as like two to three people. I brought 10 of us. I was like, I'm showing <laughs> every girl off that is fire right now. And yeah. like, I, I'm going to take the opportunity. And, we smashed it and it was one, it was still one of the highest numbers that they had had on Twitch. And it was out of my bedroom. All of us, the honey love is, had played that show. And that yeah. was like a big uh, statement. And so me and Annabelle England and uh, wow. Elida and Marie Nix, Juliet Mendoza. It was just, Holy shit, dude. It was, it was a lot of like strong energy and I was, I'm super proud of that. And I'm really happy that I got that opportunity. And, um, I just, I just like, definitely, I want to grow with the desert hearts community more. Mm -hmm. It's what I 
went to for a festival consistently. It's the only festival I've been to that many times. Yeah. And uh I just I just love it. I love the the vibe like the house techno love vibe, mm-hmm. you know? It's just and and there's a lot of fashion aspect to the community. Yes. Everybody loves to dress up and they have vendors that make beautiful outfits and stuff. So I just felt really connected to them more so than any other festival. Yeah, no. And, and you said in one way or another, something that has been said many times on the show and it's just like acceptance, no judgment come as you are, whoever you are. I mean, you went by yourself. Like that's a, that to me, like just says everything about the desert hearts community. Come by yourself. You're going to meet probably 50 of your newest best friends. Yeah. (laughs) And like how they do it, like one stage that just keeps going. I'm like, yo, that is like, it's, it's almost evil how genius it is. You know, it's like, just come whenever you want to come. I don't care what you do. I, that's what I loved. Cause I mean, I had an amazing time at LAB and this last time at Dirty Bird, it was so dope. I was like, But I, at first I was overwhelmed because I'm used to just one stage and that's where everybody <laughs> goes and meets. Right. And then I go to these other festivals. And I'm like, wait, there's a renegade over here. There's yeah. another stage over here. This <laughs> kid, well, I could, like it was like overwhelming at first. But then by the end of it, I was like really getting the hang of it. And because I am my direction sense is uh, on the weaker side, I would say. So I'm like <laughs> turned around, walking like an hour trying to find my RV. Like I could not figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I loved about Desert Hearts was the one stage, one vibe. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's so cool. And yeah, shout out to the whole Desert Hearts community and Mikey and, and Lee and everything they've done. It's just like, it's dope. And it's so cool to see them like they've been doing this, you know, like you said, like for five years before the pandemic, you were doing it. Like we're going on seven or eight years, probably even more of Desert Hearts. And now they're just doing stage takeovers, like one stage at these big festivals and it's just like the desert hearts crew and i'm like that is so awesome like festivals are finally recognizing like the communities of people that they don't really care what the festival is they want to go for their friends their people their favorite djs and i see that in a major way a big shift what's going on with festivals right now especially revolved around labels and just communities like desert hearts like 30 bird too. 30 bird is obviously probably the biggest example but um yeah so awesome dude t- speaking of dirty bird though so sick dirty bird camp out yeah I how excited so are you so freaking pumped like I mean, come on. It's like I had so much fun at the festival, but I now I get to do it at a hotel party. Like <laughs> I, you already know I love the W hotels. Like Yeah, oh for sure. Mom and dad me. are coming. I'm a hotel girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can lay down on the bed. <laughs> yeah, and they might have robes. Like I can get a robe. Like I love the little shoe service. Like yeah, room service. Wow. God, I love room service too. I put the little slippers on and the robe, and I just enjoy myself. It's it's luxury life. If every hotel it feels like it. I always try to request one with a bath too, because I'm just like, you know, it's just like nice to have like extra luxury when you're not staying at your house. Dude, for sure. I am obsessed with baths. If I can get a good bath in a hotel room, I don't see much of a reason to leave. I mean, like yeah. if it's a resort, obviously, but like I'm hanging out in the room. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so. Call front desk. Got any bath bombs? Got any sea salts or whatever the hell I else? I bring you my know? own. I bring like some like charcoal stuff or like magnesium. <laughs> and it's stuff that I wouldn't normally want to put in my bath because it's like kind of gray or like lavender yeah. scented. So I'd have to clean my bath after. But this one, I just let it go. <laughs> and I don't fuck that shit it. up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be fucking baths up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be talking about hotel bath bombs today, but geez, I mean, I should have known we were going around every corner with this interview yeah, today. Know. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about Dirty Bear Camping. It's honestly such an honor to be, I feel like it's like my callback, you know, like I got to play the camp in, in the camp out. Right. And then this is like phase two. So I feel really special. Good for you. Good for you. Do your thing. Please record that set because I want to hear what you play. Yeah, I will. That's awesome. You deserve that for real. Congratulations. Thank you. Hell yeah. 
Um, okay, so one thing that I want to ask you about, because um, just like as an up and comer, especially a female and you're laying with the music you're making and just in general, we kind of just mentioned it. House music is, is in a really interesting place right now where you look at the festival lineups and you see big, big acts that now are house music artists. And you also see big acts like Tiesto who are playing house. And I don't know, I just kind of want to get your general, general opinion on where you think the market is right now, like in terms of like where it's going to be going and, and, you know, why you think that house music is finally on its way back around to the top. Yeah, uh, I I think that it's definitely becoming, you know, popular music. I don't want to say mainstream, but yeah, I didn't want to say commercial either. I, I don't I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, you know, if as long as everybody understands, you know, the, the realness of house music of it being about community and love for the music, mm-hmm. then, hey, the more people that act like that, the better. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why as people are like, I can't believe Tiesto is releasing house. I'm like, dude, if Tiesto drops like one of my friend's tech house tracks, that's huge. You know, like yeah. that's a bigger platform for us now. So I think it's a good thing, too. Yeah, it's just we just got to make sure, you know, the artists that are getting these, um, you know, platforms and whatnot are good role models and good people that are representing house well you know and i think that Mm -hmm. if they're not it'll it'll definitely come to light and uh you know with that then uh i think it's time for my breaks to come in hot you know yeah (laughs) dude drum and bass is starting to slowly bubble breaks is bubbling techno is doing really well too Mm -hmm. and I love that as well. You know, like I, I'm in Chicago. I've been here for a while and it's obviously the home of house music. And um, I'm seeing, like I said, a, a real turn in what's doing well. Chicago, traditionally in the past couple of years, we do really well with like bass, like Zed's Dead South sells out like two nights at our biggest venue, both after parties within like 10 minutes. Right. But like they're they're an anomaly a little bit. But now you see like touring house acts like Martin Iken and Solardo, who always came. But now like people are like, hell yeah, more house, better acts. And now the community here that puts on the local events is getting that love and support. So I can only speak from Chicago, but I, I've talked to a lot of people that are in SoCal, New York, all over the world. And it's a common thing right now. And I just I think it's an exciting time to be in house music in any way. Fan, DJ, producer. A and R promoter, whatever, because people are so excited about it. Yeah, I agree. I I'm excited that everyone else is excited about it, and yeah, I, <laughs> it's not just us at the festival. We're like, yeah, yeah, like it, it. There's a positive to that. I know a lot. There's a lot of like um, snobs that are like, oh, no, I don't want everybody to like this. But it's <laughs> like if if we just have the you know the foundation of what it's about when you're listening to house. And there's a, I can only see positives coming from this, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, the reason I loved uh, electronic was it was a time that I could really just like go out and feel the music and dance. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, going to like uh, back in the day, like going to bars and stuff, they were playing hip hop. Everybody was super like, you know, intoxicated and like can't remember anything. And it wasn't anything about the music. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's just, I, I, that's just what I love about house is like, I can go and there's people in the same mindset that they're there for the music and to connect to, you know, my God, I couldn't that, have said so. it better myself. Yeah. I also feel like, uh, you know, you mentioned Steve Aoki, I mentioned, uh, Vici, right? Like that, that boom of EDM brought in a lot of people like us, the, the people from Indianapolis and the people from Omaha, Nebraska, right? Like if that wouldn't happen, we probably wouldn't be here right now. So I'm thankful for that. But we partied hard for years, you know, like I did at least like, you know, I, I jumped for three days, like as much as I could and loved it and wanted to go to the after parties. And I mean, shit, you get older and you can't do it like you used to, but you still love the music. And then I'm like, Oh, well house music. I can, I can two step to for six fucking days. You know, like I go to movement, I come out, half the person but not a shell of the person you know so it's like there's longevity and enjoying the music and i think that's why 
we're seeing like, again, I don't want to say commercialization or mainstream, but that's why we see vocal house doing really well because it's very streamable and enjoyable to listen to. And it's also so fun live. And yeah. again, that's why I think like everything's trending in the right direction for more people to feel like, oh, house isn't just like techno, you know, like most people think. So yeah, yeah I, I I agree with you in every way. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I think it's positive. It is positive. You know what? And I'm positive that you're fucking awesome. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Dude, for real. This has been such a fun interview. <laughs> Seriously, every emotion. I mean, we've got a lot to promote. I'm hoping the sponsors hear us out. Nike, you're my dream sponsor. I don't think it's going to yeah. happen. I'm just a, a, just a podcaster, but maybe one day. Aloe, do you have anything Aloe. to say to Aloe? Aloe, uh, let's work together, you know? Like, I will, <laughs> I will wear the sh- I'll wear sweatsuits at every show, even if I sweat. Yep. through them the entire time <laughs> yeah absolutely maybe it will make a specific mary drop in sweat proof aloe sweat suit Ooh. literally sweat suit yeah i love that you know Future yeah forward fashion let's go absolutely i'm also hoping maybe the w hotel can hook us up with a free room in any city that they have availability yes. and definitely need the little slippers and bath bombs on deck we will yeah. promote we will tag on instagram and on social media 100 percent. 100%. 100%. <laughs> we are very reliable. <laughs> yeah, we're very reliable. And once again, everybody be yourself comfortably, no matter what. Amen to that. Do it for yourself, too. Do it for yourself. My gosh. Mary, any last words? What are you, what are you most excited about right now for this year, other than your brand new track coming out in Samiac Discovery Project? Um, I'm excited for uh more collaborations that'll pop up in my field throughout this year hope to work with some uh rappers oh so, i know uh, hip-hop's a little flat right now with electronic taking over let's let's merge it my breaks will sound fire with your with your lyrics <laughs> dude i'm telling you i i i've interviewed a lot of rappers and they're getting involved with it and it's really cool because when you see that just like lyricism, be able to fuse with our outside the box thinking creatively, creativity. Wow. Creatively, bro. Jesus Christ. Where did my brain go right there? <laughs> I just combined like some, whatever, whatever. We're not going to edit yeah, that out. I'm a human too. <laughs> it's exciting. I agree. I think we're going to see a lot of collaboration between genres and between different types of artists. Yeah, I think so too. And um yeah i'm just i'm just i just hope that everyone starts really coming back out this year i know it's been a tough couple years and yeah uh, i'm just looking forward to seeing the scene really ignite and light up hell yeah wow that's a great final statement you should start a podcast for real did you did fantastic <laughs> thank you yeah I, I, maybe in the future right now I'm, I'm a teacher though for dj classes so yes let's promote that too is that like how, how do people get involved in that so uh it's through fem house mm-hmm. and uh the next course is going to be end of march like march 29th i think it is mm-hmm. and uh then i'm also going to be working on a side project to create some more videos for people that they can get off my website and stuff. So that's TBD, but uh, something to look forward to. Very cool. Good for you. Wow. I'm excited to see what happens for you this year. (laughs) I'm going to be front row singing Jimmy world though. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you, you gotta come, you gotta come to the VIP. You, you'll be backstage. (laughs) Dude. I don't know, man. I love front row. I love front row. (laughs) I'll You're come hang out, obviously. <laughs> yeah, Mary. Oh, play the original. <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe I will. I'll, I'll do a little uh, mashup with the OG and a techno track. I mean, obviously, nothing can stop you. You do, <laughs> you do what you want. We'll follow your lead. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sherb. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Mary. This has been so much fun, and I can't wait for the people to hear this interview. Hopefully they get cold and hot and cold again and then hot again. Woo! Woo! (laughs) 
<laughs> and sick setup, by the way. That is definitely the best background for a remote interview, without a doubt. Sorry to previous guests. I know they're going to agree with me. You killed it. We out here shooting buckets all day. Baby. All day. Swish. <laughs> Bye, Alyssa. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up? And thanks for watching that video. You looking for more content now? I got your back. Go to my YouTube channel right now, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you turn on all notifications so you never miss any upcoming exclusive artist interviews, Sherman the Booth clips, new music, live sets, and more. This is your one-stop shop for everything electronic music. Cheers.